Chosen us to instruct us. Thank you, God, for giving us a consideration. Thank you, God, for enlisting us. We know your heart is pleased with us. That's why you are giving us what you are giving us. That's why you are beginning to instruct us in a particular manner like this. We are asking, O oh God, our Lord, we will not betray your trust. We are asking, O oh God, our Lord, we will not frustrate you. This arm of fellowship that you have extended to us, Lord, may we come. Our prayer this evening is that, Lord, bid us come. Bid us come to you, God. Bid us come to you, that your counsel may be executed through our lives. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for this study He has given us. We want to thank God for granting us uh, this further step to begin to look particularly at the level that we bring revival. Uh, over the past two years or so, uh, God has turned our attention particularly to the question of an awakening. And uh, we have seen that revival is dependent on two factors. Uh, since God began to talk to us about an awakening and about a revival, we have seen that for a revival to come, uh, it takes two things to happen. First, a repentance. Uh, when people turn away from their sins and they become humble, they weep before God in deep repentance. And then they have a hunger for God. That's number one. For revival to come, we have learned that there must be a repentance. He said, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. So, if God is going to visit us and bless us with a revival, we have seen over time that there must be a repentance, a turning a turning from our wickedness. And that's what God has been dealing with us all this while that we have been coming. But we thought we should also begin to look at particularly this other thing that we must do to bring down a revival, which is prayer. For a revival to come, there must be repentance and then men must pray. So that's why we have seen that uh, for every intervention of God, for every move of God, for every awakening, for every deliverance that men receive of God, they got it through prayer. And so if revival is going to come, apart from the dealing of God to cleanse us and sanctify us and make us a holy people, holy vessels through whom He will pass, uh, we must also pray down. Revival is prayed. Revival comes because men have prayed, men have sought God. That's why we thought we should begin to look particularly about prayer, a step further on what we must do to bring down revival. But as we begin to look at it, we found out that 
the prayer that brings revival is not just an ordinary prayer. It is not God give me bread, God give me money, God give me wife, God give me joy. Those ones we know how to pray. But we have seen that the prayer that brings revival is an agonizing prayer. It is traveling prayer. It will take a travail to prevail with God. We need to pray. We need to begin to ask God to send us revival. But the prayer that brings revival is agonizing prayer. It's a prayer of travail. And when we found that, that that is the prayer that will bring a revival, we saw that we are not ready for it. Because we can't travail. It takes a woman who is pregnant and when the labor has matured, when the pregnancy has matured and has come to the full age of delivery for travel to take place. And so we've seen that it will be difficult for us to begin to talk about traveling prayer because it takes a pregnant woman who is full ready for delivery to begin to travel and when that stage has reached it will be automatic it will be automatic travel will be automatic what will bring us revival apart from a deep repentance apart from cleanness holiness the next thing is that we must pray revival is prayed down Revival is prayed down. But the kind of prayer that brings revival is a traveling prayer. We have checked and it appears that our hearts are light. We can pray that prayer. We can pray that prayer. We are not burdened with what burdens God yet. We don't feel God feeling. And so if God must help us to advance to pray a prayer that will bring a revival, that will change things around our country, God has to burden us. God has to impregnate us. God has to make us pregnant. God has to make us men that are burdened with his burden. Men that can feel his feelings. We have looked around and for now, it appears that our hearts are too light. It appears that our hearts are not yet burdened. It appears that if we want to begin to pray now, we may enter into trouble. We have seen that travel is automatic, it's spontaneous. You don't force it, you don't fake it. It comes naturally when the time of delivery is set. And so for that to take place, we need God to incubate us. We need God to impregnate us. And we need our pregnancy to mature, to come to a full maturity level. And then praying, traveling for prayer will be automatic. And so that is what God is going to be dealing with us in this meeting. That is all that as we go through the Bible study we are seeking God. And you see, you must pray because this thing will take place through prayer. If you want to be an instrument that God will use in traveling for prayer, prayer is always difficult. That is accepted. Not many people can pray. When we have Bible study in church, many people can come to Bible study. When we have it, a singing and praise worship session, Many people can come to a praise worship session. But when it comes to prayer, not many people can pray. Not to talk of a traveling prayer. And for revival to come, heaven has to be filled with prayer. Heaven has to be filled with prayer. Every quarter, everywhere, may have to be burning incense. In every family, in every fellowship, may ought to become consumed. 
prayer ought to become a breath that our ordinary breath has turned into prayer. God intervened. That is the level of prayer we needed to reach for a revival to come. But prayer is not ordinary. Prayer is, is difficult. It's difficult for us to begin to pray, not to talk about a traveling prayer. And so we found out that if the purpose of God will not suffer loss in our time, we need to come back to the basic. And our real business now, for each one of us, our real business now is to pray a prayer and say, God, impregnate me. God, impregnate me. Make me a person that can feel the way you feel. Make me a person that can, can, can see the way you see. We have seen that our hearts are light. Most of us don't have a burden. There are many all nights, but when we come to all nights, most of the prayers that we pray at all night is for marriages, for our businesses, for our breakthroughs, and there's nothing wrong with those prayers. It, the only problem is that they have become the only prayer on our mouth. Most of us in our families, the only prayer on our mouth is for bread, is for job, is for problems, solving problems. God is burdened. Iniquity abounds. Men are dying every day in thousands, and it's worldwide. Not only in Nigeria. Not only in Nigeria. In Israel, in the Arab world, in every other part of Africa, there is war. There are some countries that for five, ten years running, they have been in war. And men are dying going to hell. God's heart is bleeding, but our own heart cannot bleed. Because we don't see what God is seeing. We are concerned about ourselves. That's not bad. But we ought to go beyond that. We ought to see what God is seeing. But for now, we can't see it. We can't feel God's feeling. We are pursuing our prayer. We are pursuing our welfare. We are pursuing what concerns us. What we even perish. Things that we perish with time. That's, these are the issues on our heart. And we have seen that if God must help us to begin to pray traveling prayers that will bring a revival, our real business now is to pray and say, God, impregnate me. By the time I'm leaving this meeting, by the time I'm leaving this meeting, I want to become a person that is burdened with your burden. I want to become a person that is concerned with what concerns you. I want to become a person that is broken with what breaks you. And that we have seen must be our prayer now. If God is going to do what he has promised to do. And so that's why we have gone through the study that God has given us. We have seen through the study that some of us don't even have a womb. When we are talking about conception, conceiving for God, becoming pregnant for God, we see that some of us don't even have a womb. We simply don't have a heart for God. We simply don't have a heart for God. We don't share God's concern. We don't have God's compassion. We don't have God's compassion. Your family members are going, dying and going to hell. That's not the primary agenda on your, on your prayer list. Your father is a Muslim. Your family, they are Muslims. Your aunties, they are not born again. But topmost on your list is God, my job. God, my promotion. God, my car. Everybody has bought a car. I don't have a car. God, you must give me a car before the end of this year. People are changing their cars. God, I must change my car. I've ridden my car for too long. For five years, I've been driving one car. When will I change my car? These are the issues on our hearts. We don't have a heart for God. We don't have a concern for God. We don't have a burden for God. And we have seen that it's a reproach. It's a reproach for a man to go and marry a woman. He knows that that woman has no womb. And yet, that's our condition. We don't have a womb. Maybe the real prayer you should begin to pray now is that God, give me a womb. 
so that I can conceive for you. Give me a womb so that I can conceive for you. And so we have seen that the person that must conceive for God is a person who has turned his back at the world. He has turned his back at the pursuit of this world. He has his focus on Jesus. He has his focus on the glory of Jesus. He is determined to pray and enthrone the kingdom of God. And what we are just praying God is that God bring us to a point where we are men that can enthrone your kingdom. We are men that can pray down your kingdom. But if that must happen, then something should happen to you. Something must happen to me. Something must happen to you. This meeting will not be complete. This meeting will not be a success if we go away light-hearted the way we came. If we go away not sharing God's burden. If we go away here and our prayer topics, our prayer burdens don't change. This meeting will not be a success. For revival to come, it takes prevailing prayers, agonizing prayers. And a man cannot travel, a man cannot agonize who is not feeling pain. The pain of God, we don't feel it. The decay that has hit our world, it pains God. It, it doesn't pain us. We don't feel that pain. We want to pray and say, God, may I feel your pains. May I feel your agony. Give me a new heart. Change my heart. Give me a new heart. I want to stop the pursuits of things that will pass away. I want to stop living for living for the gain of this world. I want to have a heart for you. And brethren, the real task before us now is to pray. The real task before you now is to pray. If you must become pregnant for God, if you must become a vessel that God will pass through, God wants to begin with us at this stage. And I think we should begin to pray. I think you need to talk to God. You need to talk to God to say, God, give me a new heart. We have seen that a man that has so many stories about him, he cannot travel for God. He cannot become pregnant for God. A man that has body odors. A man that everywhere you go, they are talking about him. They are talking about his wrongs. They are talking about his evil. Even if you are a church pastor, you cannot impregnate people. Before you have come out on pulpit to preach, People are already tired of hearing you. That's the real issue that is facing us now. That's the real issue that is facing us. God does not want to bypass anybody. So don't think that what God is doing is for a people we call intercessors. For a people we call the prayer warriors. No. For revival to come, prayer ought to rise from every house, from every assembly. Our prayers ought to fill heaven. Our cry has to fill heaven. And it will take every one of us to cry. So please, we are not talking about people who are just in the intercessory group, in the prayer group. God wants each of us to join in this cry. It must be a spontaneous cry. Coming from every quarter, from every angle, from every heart, from every soul. It is the kind of cry that we move God's hands to do a new thing in the earth. And God is saying that for us to do this, we must become men that have a heart for Him. We must become men that are pregnant for God. Men that can be broken with what breaks God. And we just need a new heart. We just need a new heart. We just need God to begin to do a new work completely in our life. It doesn't matter. It may not have been there. That's what God has called us. That's what God is beginning with us at this stage. What matters now is for you to cry and say, God, God, I have been too light for too long. I have been unfruitful for too long. I have gone about without a womb, without a heart for you for too long. God, give me a womb. Give me a heart for you. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Our real business now is to pray. Our real business now is to 
you ask God to touch your life, to touch my life, I need a new heart. I need a womb. I need a womb. So I can become pregnant for God. I need to become a man that is concerned with what concerns God. If there are stories about my life, if there is sin around my life, I need God to do something now. God is coming down at our level. God is coming down at your level so that you can pray. So that you can also be an instrument. So that none of us may be bypassed. He is coming down at our level. Can you now talk to God? God, a new heart. A new heart. A new heart. Give me a heart for you, O oh God. Touch my life, O oh God. Touch my life. Touch my life. Touch my heart. Lord, change my name. Change my name. Change my testimony. Change my name. Change my testimony. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Can you cry to God? Can you cry to God? Your reproach is too much. Our reproach is too much. We don't have a heart for God. We don't have a womb for God. That's our reproach. That's our reproach. We don't have a womb for God. That's our reproach. Can you say, God, take away my reproach. Take away my reproach. Take away my reproach. Give me a heart for you, God. Give me a heart for you. Give me a womb of God. Give me a womb. Let me become a man you can fertilize. Let me become a person you can impregnate. Let me become a woman you can impregnate. Let me become a man you can fertilize. A man that can carry your burden. A man that can carry your concern. Can you pray to God? Your represent man is to ask God. God. God, make me a man. Make me a man that can conceive for you. Make me a woman that can conceive for you. Make me a woman that can conceive for you. That's our prayer. That's our prayer. Make it your prayer. Brother, Basata Gaba. Yede Gabo. Plead with God. Plead with God. Plead with God. Say, God, change my name. Change my life. Give me a heart for you. Give me a heart for you, oh God. Give me a heart for you, oh God. Give me a heart for you. Give me a heart for you, oh God. Give me a heart for you, oh God. May I be broken with what breaks you. May I be broken, oh God, we won't break you. Touch my heart, oh Lord. Touch my heart, oh Lord. We came to pray. We came to pray. So let's talk to God. Let's pray. Let's pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The reason why we cannot conceive for God. One reason why we cannot become pregnant for God. Is because our hearts are too dispersed. Our hearts are too dispersed. And it will not pay us to continue living like that. Even with what is happening around us in the world, it has shown us that the end of this world has come. 
So it doesn't pay us to continue living for ourselves. It doesn't pay us to continue pursuing this world. And we will go to heaven as poor men. As men that cannot receive anything from God. Our hearts are due this past. I want us to begin to pray for our hearts. I want you to begin to bring your heart to God. Say, God, win me from every other interest. Please, listen, 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 listen. It's a very simple prayer. If your heart desires it, forget about how God will do it. That's not our business. It's a problem we know. That's why we are talking to God. We have a problem with our hearts. That's how we are talking to God. Forget about how He will do it, but we know He will do it. Can you just pray a prayer? Say, God, my heart is despised. Win my heart, O oh God, from every interest, from every glamour, from every pursuit of this life, so that you can fertilize me. Shall we begin to bring our hearts before God? Begin your, bring your heart before God. If God can touch your heart, if God can prevail upon your heart, it will be alright. It will be alright. That's what our problem is. But can you bring it to God? Can you bring it to God? Say, God, my heart is dispersed. I am dreaming too many dreams. When I sleep, I dream too many dreams, oh God. I am going further and further and further away from you and from your purpose for my life. I am going further and further away from your vision for my life. My heart is too dispersed. My heart is too dispersed, oh God. Gather my heart together. Gather my heart together, oh God. Make me a man that can conceive for you. Make me a woman that can conceive for you. Win me, oh God. Win me. Win me, oh God, from other competing interests. Win my heart from other competing interests. Change my name, oh God. Change my name, oh God. Give me a new heart. Give me a new heart. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? We came to pray. We came to pray. So you must be praying. That's our business now. That's our business now. Is to pray. Let's talk to God. Present your heart to Him. Present your soul to Him. Present yourself to Him. Say, God, my heart is dispersed. Too many competing pursuits. Too many competing interests. My heart is scattered. Make it focus. Make it focus. Make my heart focus, oh God. Make my heart focus, oh God. Make my heart focus, oh God. Weave me from the interest of this world. Weave me from the glamour of this world. Masatagaba. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Talk to God.
Say God, visit us this evening. Can you commit this night into God's hands? And say, God, visit us this night. Visit us this night, O oh God. Visit us this night, O oh God. Can you pray? Can you pray? Say, God, visit us this night. Send your spirit, O oh God. Send your spirit, O oh God. Send your spirit, O oh God. Visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Like you have never come before. Like you have never come before. Like you have never come before. Our woes, take them away. Our woes, oh God, take them away. Our crisis, oh God, resolve them. Our hearts gather them together. Visit us tonight, oh God. Visit us tonight, oh God. Visit us tonight, oh God. As you have never done before. As you have never done before. As you have never come before in this meeting. As you have never come before in this meeting. Come upon us, oh God. Come upon us, oh God. We plead. Father, we plead with you. Father, we plead with you. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? Brother, let's pray. Our need now is prayer. Our need now is prayer. You need to pray. You need to cry. Our need now is prayer. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Say God, visit us tonight. Visit us tonight.
Jesus name we pray. to ask for their spiritual significance. Is that understood? Hey. You see, the things of the Spirit are not like that. Why the Holy Spirit is, is using the issue of a pregnancy to illustrate a, a spiritual principle, we must not begin to take every detail about pregnancy, about conception, about labor, to now begin to ask for spiritual significance. So I hope that is understood. Is that understood? Somebody is asking a question. He said, please comment on the possibility of a fibroid. That is a growth, growing along with pregnancy and the implication of this relating to our study. We didn't talk about that. So these and many other similar questions like that, please, we want to discourage them. What is in the scripture, what is in the study here alone, we cannot exhaust it. We cannot exhaust it. saying is revival. All we are saying is revival. And yet our hearts are cold. Our hearts are cold. It is possible to talk something by the word of mouth. And inside of you, your heart is cold. Your heart is not praying. You can talk prayer and inside of you, your heart is not praying. And that's the warning. We will lose it. If it only becomes a song we sing. If it only becomes a noise and our hearts remain cold, there is no relationship with God in a growing manner producing a burden and we are just singing it because everybody is singing it. You know, that's what has happened to even the concept of discipleship. God is seeking to bring an awareness about discipleship. So you now find that many people are talking about discipleship in different places. But if you ask them what is discipleship, their understanding is also not correct. And they themselves are not inside discipleship. You see, that is one way of killing what God is bringing. And so we are hoping and trusting that while we stay here, that God is going to fertilize our lives. God is going to, to do something that will ignite us, that will make us to really catch fire. And as we go, our conception will be a true conception. Praise the Lord. You know, in the book of Isaiah, it says, When we got the gave back, it was we we delivered. You know, he said, We carried it, we were in pain, we were in agony. We had a very big tummy, thinking that there was something inside. But when you went to a delivery suit, it's only wind that came out. That would be a terrible thing. That would be a terrible thing. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Any other question? Yes. Just quickly walk up here. One of the ways by which uh, intercourse can take place is breaking of the bread. I want to ask that how frequent does the church supposed to partake in this breaking of bread? And apart from the benefit of remembering the death of the Lord, what other benefit is in this breaking of bread? Okay, praise the Lord. Paul wrote in Corinthians, he says, As often as you do this, as often as you do this, 
in Acts of the Apostles, we are told that when the breaking of bread started, when the church began, he said it was daily. It was daily. Uh, so, depending on your local assembly, we will not want to say that this is the number of days in a week, or this is every day that must be done. Depending on what your local assembly has chosen, uh, it will just be right to follow it. But we must do it as often as possible. We must do it as often as possible. Uh, you see, the Bible tells us that when we do it, the benefit is that apart from remembering Christ, we also are partakers. We are, we are, we share with Him. That's why it is called communion. We, 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 we share His body. We are sharing His body. We are partakers. We are partaking of Christ. Now in that scripture the Bible also talked about partaking from idols. And uh, it says whosoever partakes of idols have become one with that idol. So also when we partake of Christ, you know we are joined to him and he strengthens our faith. We get healed in the process. Many things can happen. Our faith is strengthened. We receive healing. We he joins us with him. Our fellowship with him becomes deeper and deeper and intimate. Praise the Lord. My question is on page 8 that's uh, Traveling for Revival Part 1. I'm sorry, this is my first time or my first day in this program. I was able to make it in subsequent days. But I just want to get my focus right. Uh, traveling for revival, I just want to know, are we gathering here because of, because I know the church is looking forward to a revival. Now, is that why we are gathering here? to conceive the burden, not show it until it comes to bear. Or are we gathering here because we want to be revived, I mean, individually? And uh, is it that some of us are not actually revived yet? I just want to get my focus clear. Praise the Lord. Yes. We need a revival, both personal and corporate. Over the time, we have seen that there cannot be a corporate revival except a man is revived. Uh, we have seen that through the study. If you remember the Bible study of 1999, that was when we began to study about revival. And we saw that all the revivals we studied, it took a man through whom God uh, was able to pass. It took a vessel that God revived. So, um, for corporate revival, yes, that is what we are pursuing. But it cannot come until we are individually revived. And uh, we have seen what revival brings. We have seen the signs of revival. We have seen and studied and have come to understand that we need it. And when we say we need it, it means we are not revived. That's why we need something, isn't it? Isn't it? We have seen what our fathers did. We have seen the works that God did. When we studied about the revival that took place in England in, uh, by 
you know, in England, we saw that even after a hundred years, you could go to a place and you won't get beer. We saw that the whole laws of the country were founded on scripture. We saw that the whole government of a country was founded on the word of God. And it was an awakening that had far reaching effect. Even now that is not there, you can see that the foundation is still there and they are reaping from those benefits. And so yes, that is what we are gathering here for. First, that God will revive our lives and fill us. And when he revives us, when he revives us and fills us, we will also receive a burden for our people. We will receive a burden for our land, for our tribes, for our nations, and then for our country. And uh, we hope he will do that for us. Praise the Lord. Yesterday we began by saying that revival comes when people repent of their sins and they pray. Two things bring the revival. When people repent of their sins and they pray. And uh, we've seen that God has been taking us all through. Uh, God has been purging us. Uh, over the time, God has talked about digging up the earth. God has brought us a long way. And now we feel we should begin to consider this other aspect, which is prayer. We have seen that it takes the cry of men for God to respond. All through history, when God responded and intervened, it was because men cried. The children of Israel, they were in captivity. Until they cried, there was nothing for them. But the Bible says, when they cried, God heard them. So we feel we should begin to talk about traveling. Incidentally, we saw yesterday that the kind of prayer that will bring revival is not just God give me bread, God give me children, God give me this. It is a traveling. It is an agonizing. And we cannot agonize until we feel, we feel the pains, we feel the burden of God. We cannot travel until we have become pregnant. And that is precisely what we are looking at today. How we can conceive for God. Yesterday we began by seeing a person that can conceive for God. And today we are looking at the process that will bring about this conception. For us to take in and be burdened for God. What will make us pray? We saw yesterday that prayer is difficult. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not easy. Many people will not come to prayer meetings. Uh, but when they have conceived for God, when they have a burden for God, when we begin to feel the pain of God, then prayer will be automatic. Prayer will be spontaneous. And today we are just looking at the process that makes a man to feel the burden of God. The process that makes a man to conceive for God. Praise the Lord. So that's precisely what we are doing. Maybe the last question. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Um, my question is based on page 12. Okay. Um, a passage over there reads on Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. And what we got to learn from there was don't take this life into your hands for granted. That is the life in which God has given to us. That we shouldn't take it for granted, but at least we should be more careful 
and understand the main reason why these things that we are seeing presently are occurring. Now, my question is based on this statement that was made from Group 29. Um, <clears throat> presently, we've been seeing a lot of things such as internet, such as computerized, civilized world, and um, people are talking to us about uh, how we can be innovated, how we can move into the new world, how we can do all these things and do all that. And in the church also, we've been told that as youth, we need to we need to gear up ourselves. We need to be financially blessed. We need to be materially blessed, and things like that. Now, my question is based on this aspect, being that if we need to be revived, if we really need to be revived, should we concentrate our reviving on these issues or the aspect of God making us to make followers of his own disciples? Thank you very much. So do we concentrate on uh, making money? Making more money. Okay, praise the Lord. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. And then all these other things shall be added. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added. So when we seek God, and we seek his concern, yesterday we looked at the man that we conceive for God must be a man that has a single focus. Must be a man that has a single focus. His focus is Christ. His focus is Christ. He has turned his back at the wall. These are the things we saw yesterday. And his focus is Christ. He is not focusing on transient things. Things that will pass away with the usage. Things that will pass away with time. We are talking about the glory of God coming. And uh, it takes the power of God. It takes God walking. It takes God walking. Uh, money is good. But we will not pursue money. Because money is an addition that God will add when we seek Him. And uh, so uh, we need to have a single and a clear focus. Jesus alone is our song. Jesus alone is our pursuit. Jesus alone is our inheritance. All the other things will be added. There's nothing wrong about financial blessing. They are good. But the man that has financial blessing and Christ is not his focus, they will kill him. A man that has financial blessing, material blessing, and Jesus is not his focus. Those things are the things that will kill him. They will kill him. Even his life here on earth, he will not enjoy it. And so our focus is Christ. And uh, we seek his will to be done through our lives. Praise the Lord. And so we want to thank God for today. We thank him for what we have read. We are looking at the process by which we can conceive for God. Uh, the truth is that for anything to take place in our life, the truth is that for anything really to form in you, there is a process, a process of relating with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we have seen that revival is not arbitrary. That's what we read. We read, we say, revival is never arbitrary. It has an order. If we are saying, God, revive us, revive us, revive us, over time we have seen that 
it doesn't just happen. It has an order. First, we have seen that a man must be revived. And even for a man to be revived, it's not just coming and saying, God, revive me, revive me, revive me. That is part of it. But we have seen that there's a process. It takes a relationship. It takes an intercourse with the Lord. It takes a knowing. We saw that, we saw that Adam knew his wife. And the Bible says she conceived. Nothing is born without first and foremost a conception. And for us to conceive for God, for anything to happen in our life, for anything to take place in your life, we have seen that there is a process. And that process is born out of a continuous, consistent and growing relationship with God. And he said, this is really the matter. This is really the matter. If we are going to make progress in this endeavor, if truly revival is going to come, we are going to be able to pray to bring revival. And God is going to take us forward from this meeting. Then it means we must give heed and make it a reality in us. By the time we are leaving this place. And the things we are talking about here look very simple. But the truth is that they are not there in us. And that's why every time we come and every time we keep coming and we keep, we keep, God keeps saying the same thing. For everything to take place, for there, for there to be a formation of any tangible thing of God in your life. There's a process. Even the most talked about miracles, we are not having miracles because miracles are born out of an interaction with God. The reason why we pray so much, asking for this, asking for this, and yet we don't have, is because our lives are void. Our lives are empty. Our lives are empty. There is a relationship with God. There is a continuous growing relationship with God that we make you to conceive, that we make you to, to become what God wants you to become and to bring about His purpose to be fulfilled. And it looks very simple. It looks very simple. But the absence of it is what is causing the problem. The absence of it is what is making you not to advance in the presence of God. The absence of it is the reason why you don't have a miracle in your life. The things we talked about today, sitting at the Lord's feet, abiding in His presence, prayer, fellowship, breaking of bread, zeal for God, very cardinal. Very cardinal. And sometimes we complain that God is not doing it, God is not doing it. But you see, you don't, you don't have a time, you don't have a relationship with the world. You don't have a place that God can meet you. That's why there is no growth. You don't have a place that you can say, this morning, when I went to meet with God, this is what God told me. And so most of us cannot say, this is what God told me. At best, you say, my pastor say, my bishop say. It's because there is no place where you hear God. You don't have this continuous growing relationship with God. If I just want to ask that, how many of us read our Bible today? Let me not ask it. Let me not embarrass it. But that's the truth. These are the things that we are talking about. How many of us have a good Bible study? How many of us know daily reading aids? Like, like daily bread, 
day by day with Jesus and all of these ones. How many of us have it and how many of us keep it? How many of us can say that we really, really have a relationship with God? That God keeps talking to us and that over time we can measure our progress. That over these years I can measure my progress with God. You see, and as long as there is this omission in our life, it's not as if we don't know it, but most of us don't have the discipline to ensure this continuous intercourse. That's why whatever we get escapes. Whatever we get escapes. And each time we come, you will still answer an altar call. Some of the answered altar call yesterday. If we go not doing this, the next holy convocation, you will still come and answer altar call. Because there is no growing relationship with God. These things look very simple, but if we ask, you see that our lives are devoid. Our lives are devoid of them. And we saw in the Bible study that, no, if you don't conceive for God, you will conceive for the devil. There is no doubt about that. There is no doubt about that. If God cannot fill you, if you are not as valuable for God to fill, then you are valuable for the devil to fill. If you don't do exploit for God, you will do exploit for the devil. There is no city on the fence. When we don't have time for God, we have time for the devil. We, we lend our hearts for the devil to use. You can't meditate 10 minutes on the word of God, but you can meditate 30 minutes on evil. You can't pray for 5 minutes, but you can take a 1 hour to backbite somebody. When he comes to prayer, he says, ah, this boy will pray too long. Me, I won't go to that prayer meeting. You, they just pray too long. But when it goes to backbiting, you can stay there for one hour, two hours. When it is complaining about the policies of government, yes, you are very good at it. It's either you become fanatical for God or you become fanatical for the devil. There is no doubt about that. You either conceive for God or you conceive for the devil. There is a process. You read newspaper every day, but you don't read your daily guide every day. Every day you buy newspaper. It's not every day you read your daily guide. And he says, we will keep coming, we will keep coming, we will keep coming, and nothing will happen. Each time you hear the word of God, you cry, you weep, you say, God, do something in my life, do something in my life. But you are not entering into a definite relationship. For anything to be born, it takes a relationship to bring it about. And we are seeing that even for my own personal revival, this is the process that will burn it. This is the process that will bring it to come to pass. Even for my own personal miracles, perhaps you don't know that what you are looking for is in the word of God. That miracle of a breakthrough in your business, that miracle of marriage, that miracle of employment, it is in the word of God. And as long as you are not reading the word of God, as long as, as long as there is no place where God can meet with you and show you your wife, how will you find a wife? How will you know his will? So, you see, for the Bible to come, it takes prayer. And we have seen that we can't pray because our hearts are too light. Our hearts are too dispersed. You are talking about internet. But what has internet got to do with what we are talking about? And that's to show our hearts. 
So you spend a whole day on, on, on a computer and you don't have time for God. That's what happened. When you go back there, you say, I just want to key in something. And you'll be taking before you know by 1 a.m. When you wake up, you just say, I'm tired. Then you go and sleep. There are some of us that 9 o'clock NTA news, you must watch it. You see, we have those kind of discipline, but we don't have a discipline for God to say that at 9 o'clock I must be found praying. We don't have that discipline. Some of us have a discipline that we don't go late to office. But we don't have a discipline for spiritual things. And you see, this is lacking. This is lacking. The Bible says, Adam knew his wife and she conceived. Even Hannah, for her to conceive, the Bible says, her husband knew her Nobody conceives without this knowing. Nothing truly, really can take place in your life. It will only be a wish. It will only be a wish. But if God is going to make progress with our lives, if we are going to make progress with God, if we are going to advance to the point that we can begin to feel God's burden and we can begin to carry his burden to say we are praying for what concerns God. Then, we must rise from this meeting determining that we will foster our relationship with God. And to foster your relationship with God means that you are going to develop a time to be staying aside with God. We saw that Conception does not take place in the open. It takes place in the dark. In the dark. Darkest of corners. Sometimes at very odd hours in the night. As long as we are not men of this intimacy. As long as we are not men that can be alone with God. As long as we are not men that can withdraw from public activity to focus on God, to learn Him, to worship Him, and just to relate with Him, you see, years we keep going and revival will elude us. It is good to talk about revival. It is good to pray that God revive me, but there is a process, there is an order. And if we are serious with God, we must be determined to leave this place committed to that order. Praise the Lord. So shall we pray. In very few minutes, can you just talk to God? There is an emptiness. You are not reading your Bible. You are not reading Christian literature. You are more interested in current affairs. You know current affairs, but God doesn't talk to you. Can you talk to God about the lack in your life? God is not condemning you. He's only giving us opportunities so that we can begin with Him. Can you speak to God about the lack in your life? You are so busy. So busy because of your profession. Is that the reason why you wouldn't have time for God? Is that the reason why you are not in any definite relationship with God? Even opportunities of discipleship that God has opened, you can't go into it. Your business does not permit you to go into learning God, into discipleship. 
this evening we have seen one thing is needful. One thing is needful. Can you ask God for that? Can you ask God for that? The first thing we saw that Jacob was left alone with God. That was how he had an encounter. Jacob was alone with God and he had an encounter. You don't have a time to be alone with God. Can you tell God of your need? Can you tell God of your lack? Can you plead with God? Can you plead with God? You are disciplined in kind of things. But you are not disciplined in spiritual things. It's a lack. It's a lack that may take away revival from your life. It's a lack that may make you never to see revival. Can you say, God, reorder my life? Reorder my priorities. Reorder my priorities. Do something to me now. Do something to me now. Are you having a growing relationship with the Lord Jesus? Can you tell of the progress you are making with God in your life? Revival is not a different area. Can you tell of a consistent growth, a consistent progress that you are making with God? That's our emptiness. That's our lack. Can you talk to God? Can you present your lack to God? Say, God, feel me now. Can you say, God, reactivate me? Give me a Z for you. You have a Z for kind of things, but you don't have the same Z for God. You have a Z for your profession, but you don't show the same Z for God. Can you say, God? This is where my revival should start. If God is going to revive you, this is where our revival should start. If you are not going to lose what God will do in your life in this meeting, you need to pray. You need to pray and say, God, help me to build an altar for you. My personal altar. My personal quiet time. My personal prayer life. My relationship with you in prayer. My personal worship life. You only grow who you don't worship in. You don't know how to give thanks. You don't know how to relate with God. Say God from this moment. Feel my emptiness. Feel my emptiness. If I'm coming to Holy Convocation next year, I want to call taller than I am. I want to call taller than I am. If you will call me for a convocation next year, I want to call taller than I am. I want to come taller than I am 
now. Can you pray? Can you pray? This is where the problem is. This is where the problem is. Can you talk to God about it? Don't say because I'm a woman. I'm so busy in the home. I don't have time for God. That's not correct. Can you bring your shadows to God? Can you bring your day to God? Say, God, order my life. Order my priorities. Order my priorities. 